Thank you. Um, thank you for the opportunity to present here today. So I have no uh, disclosures except that I am a woman. <laughs> Um, so despite the fact that there's actually been more and more women um, entering academia and surgery specifically, they seem to be still underrepresented in leadership positions. And three theories have grown over the, uh, the years to try to explain this disparity. One of them is the pipeline, uh, as we saw in the previous talk, and it's that women uh, might not be long enough in the field to actually reach these positions. The glass ceiling, which pr probably is the most popular term that you've heard, um, is despite the fact that there's uh, more women entering into the field, they just aren't reaching the highest and most prestigious positions. And a newer concept, which is the sticky floors concept, is that fewer women are actually given the resources um, at the start of their careers to reach these positions. So what about surgery? Um, it seems to be a significant problem. Uh, and a recent study by the Association of Women Surgeons from 1994 to 2014 showed that the number of women has doubled in surgical residence. But if we keep going at the rate it's going in um, full professorship, um, it actually will take about 121 years to reach gender equality. So what about societies? I'm sorry about the slides, it just keeps cutting. Um, Physician-supported societies, we know they are important in the uh, career advancement, and uh, they allow access to critical resources, networking, and publishing opportunities. So SAGES, that was founded in uh, 1981, is critical now in shaping surgical practice, and it has about 6,000 active members. Um, and the first female committee member was in 1992, and, um, and there's been only one woman president since its beginning uh, in 34 years. So the purpose of our study was to determine if there are differences in the advancement of women and men within SAGE's leadership. So uh, data was provided to us by SAGE's um, membership office, and we performed a retrospective audit of all yearly committee members from 1981 to 2016. However, gender distribution of overall members at large was only available from 2010 to 2016. Uh, members who participated in more than one committee uh, were analyzed as a single entry, and we categorized them in four uh, positions um, based on the leadership roster. So we have committee members that then go on to be committee chairs and co-chairs. They proceed to the Board of Governors, and finally, they can reach the Executive Committee. And the last three are the ones that we call um, leadership positions. So we then investigated the three phenomena individually. Um, determining the pipeline, we looked at the rate of change in the proportion of women committee members compared to the overall SAGES members uh, over time. Looking at the sticky floors, we compared the advancement beyond committee membership. Um, and at the glass ceiling, we analyze the proportion trajectory to leadership positions. So we determined um, someone who has a linear relationship going through that pyramid, as I described, and someone who skipped ranks, being someone who, let's say, um, was a committee chair, co-chair, and then went directly to the executive without going through the board. We performed a usual statistical analysis uh, from 1992 onwards, from when the first woman became a committee member, uh, and we did Kendall Tao test to compare trends over time. So out of 8,003 troll committee positions, we identified 1,326 uh, individual committee members, of which 195 uh, went on to be chairs and co-chairs, 112 reached the Board of Governors, and 33 reached the Executive Committee. Looking at the total gender distribution, uh, we see here that 20% um, of committee members were women, and when looking at leadership roles, about 15% were women as well. And at the bottom, you can see one female president in the last 25 years. Um, we then looked at the pipeline, and we see a significant improvement from 1992, when there were only 3% committee members. I significantly increased to almost 25% in 2016. We then decided to look at uh, how the um, proportion of women in leadership positions compares to that of female members at large. So here we see uh, female overall members. When comparing um, female committee members over time, we can see that the rise has actually outpaced that of uh, female com committee members at large. Um, for committees, chairs and co-chairs, the proportion of females has been um, wavering uh, back and forth, but um, it hasn't reached a statistical uh, significant difference between um, that and overall members. For board members, we see a nice improvement. Um, before 2012, it was consistently lower, and we see a change since then that has uh, significantly increased. And finally, at um, executive officers, Females have been consistently underrepresented um, with a nice shift in 2016, but there are only two of them. 
So looking at sticky floors uh, and the advancement past committee members to any leadership position, 16% of men um, advanced to any leadership position, whereas only 11% of women did. Um, it was not statistically significant, but we th there is a difference in the numbers. Um, when looking at the time it took for everyone to reach uh, leadership positions, there was no significant difference between the genders, and it took on average about 10 years for committee members to reach um, the executive committee. And finally, when looking at that track, the trajectory of uh, committee members, we can see that 34% of men skipped ranks, whereas um, only 20% of women, three, skipped those ranks. Uh, it was not statistically significant, however. Finally, we decided to take a look at the nominating committee because um, they do play a very significant role in determining who will be part of the executive committee and what roles those committee members will um, reach. And out of 37 committee members, there's only been two women in the last 25 years and none of them reach um, a chair or co-chair position. So in conclusion, the proportion of women in leadership positions at SAGES has been um, higher than overall membership as we've, as we've seen, and there's been no difference in the advancement of women committee members to leadership positions when we look at the proportion or the team, uh, mean time to advancement. However, certain aspects are still to be improved, like the nominating committee, um, and SAGES should continue to foster um, the advancement of women as it is currently doing. Thank you very much.